What's up guys, welcome back to the iOS development channel. This is maxcodes.io. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a custom UI collection view cell. And I'm also going to show you how to get this little rounded edge on each one of these cells with custom images. And we're also going to be changing the scroll direction of this collection view. So before you get started, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in just a moment. Let's start writing some code. All right, so what we're going to do is create a new Xcode project, and I'm just going to call this CV cells or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter. Okay, now while this is getting all ready, go ahead and check out my site, maxcodes.io, and just go ahead and navigate it and see if you like it. But if you're ready, let's just go ahead and dive into writing this collection view cell. Okay, and my site will show you all the different resources you have to learning iOS development, and that's why I bring it up. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to create a collection view. Now, the way we're gonna be doing this is by saying file private collection view, and we'll say file private let collection view, UI collection view, and we'll set this equal to a function that returns itself and then we will declare all our layout. Okay, we'll say let layout is equal to UI collection view flow layout. And this is a concrete layout object that organizes items into a grid with optional header and footer views for each section. Okay, now we're not really going to be dealing too much with this, but we are going to be changing the scroll direction with this layout. And that's why I'm declaring it separately. And I'll show you how to do that when we get around to it. For now, let's just get the CV on the screen. Okay, so I'm going to say let CV is equal to UI collection view. And this UI collection view is going to take in a frame of dot zero and a collection view flow layout of layout. Let's go ahead and return the CV. And I want to say CV dot translates auto resizing mask into constraints is false because we're going to use programmatic auto layout to throw it on the screen, which is going to take like four lines of code. Okay. We also need to register a cell. So we have to say CV dot register and the cell class is going to be UI collection view cell dot self. Okay. Now this is how you register a normal UI collection view cell, right? And then we're going to use the reuse identifier of whatever string you want to put there. Now, when we write our custom class in this video, we're going to be changing this to the class name. And I'll talk about that when we get to it. Okay. So let's go ahead and throw this on the screen by saying view dot add sub view collection view. And then we'll say collection view dot background color is equal to dot white. Cause by default it has a black background color. And then we need to constrain it. So we'll say top anchor constraint is equal to view dot top anchor. And the constant will be 40 because we kind of want to inset a bit. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is copy this three times. Okay. So copy it, paste it, paste it, paste it. And for these two, we'll say leading anchor and leading anchor and trailing anchor and trailing anchor. You can think of trailing anchor as the right anchor and then bottom anchor is clearly the bottom anchor and then leading is the left anchor. Okay. Now for the trailing and bottom, we want to put negative 40 for the constant so that it will be inset 40 on the left, on the right and bottom. Okay. So that's going to put our collection view on the screen, but we're not going to see it if we compile because there's nothing really in this collection view, right? So let's not worry about compiling it yet. Feel free to change the background color to like red and compile it and see if it's on the screen. There should be zero errors. This code looks really good to me. Okay. All right. So what we need to do is we need to use the collection view delegate and data source protocols. Okay. So let's create an extension and we'll say, this extension is of type view controller or it's on view controller. And we're going to override the UI collection view delegate flow layout. And this is going to basically provide us with the method. We can create the size of the collection view cell with. Okay. We also want to use, put a comma there and we also want to use the UI collection view data source. This is going to allow us to basically initialize our cells and tell the app how many cells we have and then tell the app what kind of data the, those cells have. Okay. So we'll say, we'll hit this little red thing and hit fix. And that will add us number of items in section and self for item at. We also want to override the size for item at method. And we just want to return a CG size of let's say view, sorry, collection view dot frame dot width divided by 2.5 and the height will be collection view dot frame dot width divided by two. So this will be a little bit bigger than the width. Okay. Now that will give us this exact size here. Okay. Now let's go ahead and let's return three 
and then let's re let's create a cell by saying let cell is equal to collection view dot dq reusable cell with identifier cell and the index path will just be the index path we're provided with right here. Let's go ahead and return this cell and let's just give it a background color. We'll say cell dot background color is equal to dot red. Now let's go ahead and compile this and nothing is going to happen yet because we haven't set the delegate and the data source to these methods. Okay. And if you've never worked with collection views before, this is probably really confusing for you, but just keep doing this and you'll understand it at a point. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to go up here in our view to load and we want to say collection view dot delegate is equal to self. This is basically going to run our delegate flow layout methods and attach them to this collection view. Okay. So we'll have the size, right? But we haven't set the data source to self, which means these methods won't run, which means we won't have any items and we won't have any cells. Okay. So what we need to do is say collection view dot data source is equal to self. And that will run those methods and we'll be provided with three cells with red background colors and these sizes. Okay. So let's go ahead and compile our app. And we're now going to see basically three cells with red background colors. And then now we can talk about custom data. All right. We want to get this custom data in there to display some images. Okay. We also want the, the, uh, collection view to be scrolling this direction. Okay. So the way we can quickly add in the directional scroll is by going up here into our collection view and right underneath layout, we can say layout dot, and we can say, mm, let's say direction, scroll direction is equal to dot. And we'll say horizontal because we want it to go from left to right. Now, if you compile this, this isn't really going to work because our collection view is way too high for only three cells to be scrolling left to right, which means it's just going to do that. Right? So if we had a number of cells, like 20 or something, it would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. And then we'd be able to scroll. So if I, change the number of items in section to return 20 and I compile that, you're going to see now that we can scroll it from left to right quite a bit, except for it's going to be all over the screen, right? How do we really get it to just be that top row? Well, it's pretty simple. All we have to do is change the bottom anchor of the collection view or get rid of the bottom anchor entirely and make the collection view height as only as high as one cell. So we can say collection view dot height anchor dot constraint is equal to and it's layout dimension and we can say collection view or yeah collection view dot frame sorry collection view dot height anchor and then the multiplier can just be 0.5 and let's change this to the width anchor because if you remember down here our height is the width divided by two so if we take the width of our collection view and we say we want it to be 0.5 of that that's going to be half the width which will mean that our collection view height is only as high as one of these cells. So if we compile this now, you're going to see that we can scroll from left to right 20 cells. And that's exactly what we want. Okay. So let's go ahead and check that out. You'll see in about two seconds. Come on. We didn't activate it. Okay. So we have to say dot is active is true. And then now when we recompile this, you're going to see exactly what I told you we would see. Okay. All right. So now you can see we have all these cells. Now that reminds me, I actually have a collection view course that shows you all about collection views and about how to use, uh, how to create a Pinterest layout. If you're familiar with that, with the different sized cells, which you can find in the link in the description somewhere, it's going to be labeled collection views or something anyway, or it's on my site. Either way, let's not talk about that too much. Let's get the custom cell on the screen. How can we do that? Well, first, what we want to do is create the cell. So let's go down to the bottom here and say class custom cell is of type UI collection view cell. Let's go ahead and let's create an initializer. Choose the frame one and say super dot init and choose the frame initializer and just pass in zero. Okay. We don't need to worry about that frame. We could also just pass in frame because we're provided it right here. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is use this. We can't really use it yet until we get rid of one error that's going to provide us from trying to compile this. This error is the default error you get from not having the required initializer. Go ahead and hit fix and get that in there. If it doesn't give you that, just go ahead and type that in. Okay. So now if we go to compile it, nothing would happen because we're not really using this cell. We haven't done anything with it. We can use it by going up to the top here. And instead of registering UI collection view cell, we register custom cell. Now, this isn't going to work completely 
by itself either. And it's because down here where we're dequeuing the cell, we're just dequeuing it as a normal collection view cell. So what we need to do is cast it. We need to say as custom cell. Now what we can do is recompile the app and you're still not going to notice much of a difference because the cell is literally just a UI collection view cell with nothing in it. So it's going to be no different than a regular collection view cell. But we can change the value in there by adding an image view, right? So let's go ahead and say file private, let BG is type UI image view. And then we can set that equal to a function that returns itself and we can declare and return an image view in here. We'll say let IV is equal to UI image view and we'll return the IV and then let's give it some properties. We'll say IV.translates auto size mask and constraints is false. And then so the photo fits in, we'll say IV.content mode is equal to dot scale aspect fill. And then we need to say IV.clips to bound so the image doesn't bleed from the image, okay? And we need to set that to true. Okay, let's go ahead now and get this on the screen. How do we do that? Well, in our initializer here, we just need to say content view. And if you read the description of content view, you'll see if it loads, the main view to which you add your cell's custom content. Okay, so this is a custom cell. We wanna add some custom content. So we'll say content view .add sub view, bg, and then we'll anchor it. So we'll say bg.topanchor.constraint is equal to content view .top anchor is active true then we'll copy that a few times we'll say leading anchor and leading anchor trailing anchor trailing anchor bottom anchor and bottom anchor okay now we don't have any images so this isn't really going to do anything so let me show you where you can get images really easily if you go to unsplash.com, this is all free. This isn't my service or anything. I'm just showing you this because Unsplash is a great source of free online picks, okay? Now, mine's not loading, my internet's being slow. So just know that unsplash.com here has tons of quality images that you can get for free if you wanna add these in. And what you can do is hover over it and download an image. I don't know if this is gonna download very quick because of how slow my internet is being but okay there we go downloaded so what i'm going to do is hit show and finder and then i'm going to call this island three just because you'll see i have these three pictures here okay so i'm going to drag these pictures into my project again these photos are for free and they're on unsplash.com i'm just going to take these images and drag them into my project okay i'm going to drag them into the xcode assets folder right here so let me go ahead and do that real quick i'm gonna drag it right there and I will get out of here and you'll see we have island one, three, and zero. Now what I can do is go back into here and we can add these images. So just so you understand how it works by default, I'll say IV.image is equal to UI image. And this UI image will be, I'll say image literal because that's easier. I'll say image literal. I'll double click on that and I'll select one of those images. Now when I compile it, you're gonna see that each one of these cells has the same image, but how do we really get custom data in there? Oh, glad you asked. What we can do is we can create an array of data and a struct that we can go over to show you custom data and throw it in the app. So let's go ahead and let's go into our app up here at the top and let's say let data is equal to an array. What is this array going to contain? Well, it's going to contain a struct that has a couple properties, okay? We'll say struct and we'll say image cell or custom data. Let's just say it's type custom data since our cell is named close to that so we can be consistent. And we'll say var title is string and we'll say var image URL or let's say image is of type UI image and we'll say var URL is of type string, okay? Now, we're only going to be using the image but I want you to get an idea of how you might structure some of your custom data, okay? So what we can do in here in let data is we can provide some instances of this custom data. So we can say custom data has a title of, let's say the wilderness, or let's say, I don't know, the mountains, whatever you wanna put there. And then for the image, we wanna say image literal, right? And then we'll select one of these images, okay? So I'll select the same image. And then the URL string, I'm just gonna put maxcodes.io slash courses, and then now what I'll do is put a comma here and I'll copy this custom data and paste it 
three times. Now I haven't made the enroll page yet, but I'm gonna say maxcodes.io slash enroll for the subscription service I'm coming out with that the first 100 uh, subscribers to the subscription will get it for $10.99 a month versus $25.99 a month, okay? But don't worry about that. That's not even up yet. So if you go to that URL, it's probably not there yet. But if this, if you're watching this video like a couple weeks from now or a couple months from now, it's definitely gonna be up, okay? Either way, let's just change some of this data. We'll say mountains, I'll say person, I'll say islands, okay? Now what we wanna do is change the images. So I'll select that. I'll choose the person and then I'll choose that and I'll choose the islands. Okay, so we now have some custom data. How do we get it into our collection view? Well, pretty simple. All we have to do is go down to here and instead of returning tiny, we can return data.count. So it only gets three. And then in here we can say cell.imageView, but you, you'll see it doesn't work. And that's because it's file private. Now we don't really wanna change this because we only want this image view to be accessible within the class. So how do we get the image in there? Well, pretty simple. All we have to do is say cell.data, if I could type, is equal to self.data at index path dot row. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna give us the custom data for each cell. Now, how does this work, right? How is this getting in there? There's nothing really in our cell called data. Well, good you ask, because we have to write that. So let's go into our custom cell and let's say var data is of type custom data, because you'll notice we declared this as custom data up here in this struct. And then what we can do is use did set. So first mark this optional because we don't know if it's always going to be set, right? We could initialize this. We could not even have this line in here. So we need this to be optional. Then what we can do is say did set, and then we can unwrap it. We can say guard let data is equal to data else return. And if you're not familiar with the syntax, don't worry about it. I'm just trying to show you how to get a collection view, a custom one on the screen. And that's what I want you to learn in this video for now. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll say bg.image is equal to data dot image and bam we're set let's go ahead and compile our application and let's see what we get on the screen all right so seems to be working and i use images and unsplash and all that in the collection view course so if you're interested in that again that's in the description and you'll see now that we have our custom cells now i told you we were going to be adding a little bit more to this so let's go ahead and do that i'll stay true to that what we're gonna to wanna to do is say iv.layer.corner radius is equal to 12. I just wanna give it a little bit of a corner radius so that you can see that it looks a little bit better than just a square. Now, for some app designs, maybe a square looks better, but I think that a little corner radius in there looks really nice. All right, so that's it for this video, and I uh, hope you liked it. Go ahead and visit maxcodes.io to join the free newsletter, and drop a comment, and I'll see you in the very next video, as always. All right, see you later.